This is Desktop Dino 5. If you take this software, plug in the information for the engine you're building, it will spit out horsepower and torque curves. Let's take a good look at how this software works and do a review on this product. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. If you've seen any of the videos in my 393 Windsor build series, twice I have mentioned a piece of software called Dino 2000. And that software that I've been using for over 20 years that helped me to pick the components that I am putting into this 393 Windsor build. A digital dyno is only going to be so accurate. You know, it doesn't take into account all the different flow numbers for all the different intakes. And it doesn't take into account some of the real world situations that can affect your numbers. But what it does do really, really, really well is plot curves. Let's say you're wanting to build a motor that's all about low end torque that's not going to see much more than 4,000 RPM. This software is going to help you pick the components to achieve that goal. Let's say you want to build a screamer that goes 8,000 RPM and just continues to climb with horsepower. Again, this software is going to help you pick those components. This is made by the same company that made Dino 2000. This is their latest version. And so I will probably be referencing Dino 2000 as I'm showing you how this works. I will talk about some of the differences between the software. The main reason I bought this, and let me be perfectly clear, I paid for this. There was no sponsorship from this company. I did not get this for free. The reason I bought it is people have been contacting me, asking me about Dino 2000 because they can't get a copy. That software has not been available for a long time. And this is the latest version. Now to me, it seems like they went backwards a little bit. Dino 2000 is a fancy name. Desktop Dino 5, well, that leaves a little something to be desired. But as long as it works, as long as it does what we need it to, I don't care what they call it. The first thing you need to know is that this is a Windows-based program, and that is a little bit disappointing to me. There are a lot of Mac users out there. I am a Mac user. This is not terribly complicated software, and it would not be that hard for the manufacturer to import this in such a way that it could run native in a Mac environment. So that is the first tick against this software. But you know what? I had that same problem with Dino 2000. I ended up having to use a Windows emulator to run that software. I purchased this from Summit Racing. I paid just right around $60 for it. This can be directly downloaded from motionsoftware.com and it's actually less expensive because they're not having to ship you a hard copy and all you're getting is just downloading the digital file. This can be had for about $40. I wish that I'd have realized that before I purchased this because I would have gone that route rather than getting it on disk. But again, it's only 20 bucks more. It wasn't that big a deal. I'm just letting you know that that option is available. So let's get into this. Let's look at this software. Let's build an engine. Might just happen to be a 393. I can't think of any reason why not to build a 393. And I will talk you through how it works, and we'll talk about some of the differences between this and Dino 2000, and we'll also talk about some of the good things about this and some of the shortcomings. Spoiler alert, I love having digital Dino software. I love being able to plot horsepower and torque curves for any cam that I have specs for, for whatever heads I have specs for, and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of building a motor. Having this software at your disposal, being able to put things into the computer, make changes, tweak things, will allow you to make educated decisions and get your motor 
to function the way you want it to specifically for your application. So we start by opening the software. Simply click the icon for Desktop Dino 5. From there, a window opens up that gives us all sorts of parameters. Now, here at the top, we have some interesting parameters based on ambient temperature, that sort of thing, altitude. These are things that would have an effect on the torque and horsepower of your motor. If this was a real chassis dyno or engine dyno, these factors would be huge. And I believe that this was an attempt by the software manufacturer just to add a little more accuracy to the software. As you can see, it is currently green, which means numbers have already been plugged in. And this is the default setting for these atmospheric parameters. As far as I'm concerned, these parameters don't matter. It doesn't matter to me if you're at a super high altitude or if you're at Death Valley. All I want to know is how a curve is plotted with one cam or another cam. And so as long as I keep these parameters the same, I get a great A-B test that's going to apply specifically for my application. So now let's start putting in the parameters specifically for the motor we are wanting to build. We start with the short block. From there, American, of course I'm building a Ford, and we're going to go down to 8-cylinder small block. Now, there's not a choice here for a 393 Windsor, and that is okay. We can go down to a 351 Windsor, and then we can change things to make it work specifically for what we are using. First thing we need to change is the bore. Now, this motor is a rebuild, which means the cylinders are 30 over, and that is going to affect the displacement. Next, we change the stroke, and this is where all the extra cubic inches are really coming from. From there, you can see that we are at 392.9, basically a 393. Next thing we need to look at is cylinder heads. Again, we click into it, and it's going to give us some options. If we go to domestic cylinder heads, there are quite a few different versions we can pick from. These are going to be generic, but something may be close to what you have. For this case, we're going to do custom port flow. If we click open, we can find the files where I have previously put in the flow numbers for the heads that I am using. All this data happens to be on my older Dino 2000 files. And you can see I've put in stuff for AFR heads, E7 heads. This is the basic flow tech like I have on my 302. And then the thumper heads that I am actually using. That populates all the flow numbers. And then we just click OK. Now we still need to put in valve size because that is something that can be changed. You can buy a set of heads with one valve size and put in bigger valves. 202 intake. 160 exhaust. As you can see, as we change each section, it turns green, and the sections that have yet to be changed are in red. Compression ratio. Usually you have this figured out ahead of time based on your pistons and your gasket thickness, the volume of your cylinder heads, all those kind of things, and you can put that information in. Now we'll get down to induction. Now this is where this software is kind of a one-size-fits-none. It does give you some fairly good choices as far as the general flow and function of your intake, but it's not giving specific flow numbers for the specific intake you are using. So what you kind of have to do is go with your best guess as to what is closest. We're going to go dual plane high flow. It's not going to be max flow, just kind of a a good ballpark and then flow rate is going to be the size of our carburetor and the configuration of our carburetor so I am going to be using either a 600 CFM four barrel carburetor or as you've seen in my videos throttle body injection but it's still four barrel 
Then when we get to exhaust, we have lots of options. Now it is nice that this software does have an option for with or without catalytic converters. The Dyno 2000 software did not have that distinction. You basically had header size and with or without mufflers. So we'll do small tube headers with mufflers without catalytic converters. Now the last thing is the camshaft. We're going to go directly in because we want our very specific camshaft. Now there is a spot where you can put in all your specs or in my case where the specs have already been entered in, we can simply hit open and pull up that file. And here are all our camshaft specs. I have lots to choose from, lots of cams that I tried. Let's put in a Ford HO just for comparison. This is not the actual cam I picked, but it is a good baseline. hit OK. It's asking if we want to populate that information. Give it a second. And there we have our horsepower and torque curves. Now, as you can see that HO cam definitely performs fairly well under 4000 RPM. It climbs fairly quickly and then you have a fairly flat curve between 2500 and 4000 RPM. But at that point the torque curve does begin to drop off. And as you can see, based on those torque numbers, our overall horsepower is good. We're at about 350, but not great. Now you can also pull up a table, and this is gonna give you your specific numbers in 500 RPM increments. All right, let's play around. Let's make some changes. Let's go in and change the compression ratio. Not that anyone would want to run 8 to 1, but let's say you did. And as you can see, the numbers drop down. That curve got less aggressive. Now let's go up to 14. And you can see that it jumps up quite a bit. So at this point, you can take a look at it and go, okay, the more compression I have, the more challenges I might have with things like pinging. But is it worth it? Is getting 20 more horsepower worth the potential downsides? Now let's change the cam. Let's put in the cam that I actually chose. Same thing as before. We will open it up. And we will scroll down and pick the specs for the trick flow camshaft. And we hit apply. Again, it's going to ask us if we want to populate, and we do. And now we can see the new horsepower and torque curves. For this engine, I am looking to perform between 2,000 and 5,500 RPMs. And that curve is perfect for that. The torque curve is flat, practically, from 2,000 to 5,500. And the horsepower is climbing the whole time. Now let's change it from a dual plane to a single plane, just to see what that does to the numbers. And as you can see, we lost a little torque right there in the two to 3,000 RPM range, and we picked up some horsepower, which is what you would expect from a single plane versus a dual plane intake. I wish that this software had the option to lay one graph over the other. I know in my 393 Windsor build videos, I do show multiple graphs on one image, but I had to do that digitally after the fact. I went into Photoshop and that's how I was able to achieve that effect. Overall, I absolutely love both of these pieces of software. I think there are some improvements to Desktop Dyno 5 over Dyno 2000, especially since you can't even get Dyno 2000 anymore. If you are doing any kind of an engine build, even if you're only building one engine, this will allow you to take the guesswork out you can build it for your desired RPM range. You can build it around one or two parts that you've already picked and then custom tailor all the rest of the pieces to work perfectly together. If you couldn't tell already, when it comes to Dyno software, I'm a fan. If you like what you've seen, please click like. 
If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.